That's the only thing that matters, that he was happy. So my thoughts when I saw Sumizi and Mohali were, that is definitely a sugar daddy relationship. <laughs> I mean, Sumizi is really older. He is. And by virtue of definition of a sugar daddy is somebody who's older who has money. And that's exactly what it was. Which also, in a sense, feeds into a very, very dark stereotype that is created within queer culture, where if you're young and you're good looking and you're still fresh and you're a twink, all you want is a rich guy, all you want is the lifestyle, all you want is to be able to attend the Durban Julys and the red carpets and to carry Louis Vuittons and drink Moet. So, in the beginning, it seemed that way. It seemed like, ah, this boy is just gonna charge him his money. And these were conversations we were all having. These were conversations were just like, yeah, it's cute that you're posting him, but you do know this is gonna end in tears. A man with such a longevity in the industry, it's like you would think he would have someone a bit more older, mature, because he was going into that age as well. So Mahal is quite young. He's still figuring himself out. I don't understand why there was so much hype or so much attention to the fact that there's such a gap. Gay marriages is very tricky, especially in this country. I remember, you know, back in the days, um, there was no, there were no gay marriages. So what we fought for at the time, we managed to get partnership agreement, where then in a partnership agreement, you sign with your partner that you have been in a relationship for this long and you are committed to each other. So after that, we're up in arms and back and forth. We were in constitutional court until 2006 when then we were able to get the bill and then the civil act was signed in, I think, November 2006, so. And the first gay marriage, I think, happened in December 1st. I think it was Gibson Halls, something like that, yeah. I remember the big hoo-ha of the year when, the, when same-sex marriages were, were legalized, when that bill was passed. I think I was in matric. Same-sex couples have to be allowed to marry so that they can enjoy the status, obligations, and entitlements enjoyed at the moment by opposite-sex couples. But I remember how big it was and the conversations that, that were having, that were happening on radio and some of the things that people were saying about, so are you going to have two brides at that wedding? Yeah. My main query was, how does it work? They say, about especially to your ancestors, you know, culture evolves and we are evolving but some people want to remain there when it suits them to oppress. And it serves them to hold certain positions where they feel like, oh, this is wrong, this is against God, this is against culture, which is all bullocks. I think it's beautiful to keep our culture and our traditions alive, whether we are LGBTQI or not. Why do we want to be a part of it if it already excludes us? The ancient way and concept of Mahadi and Lobola and traditional weddings is not what we have made it today as society. It was like a game that was played between two families so that they can get to know each other better. In England, I'm confused, but I feel as though if we were in a moment, I figured to understand what you're going to do it like this or whatever. Like, <laughs> it's just you just have to get your understanding yourself together with your partner. But everybody else outside, I suppose, if you can explain, you, sh you should share the information. But other than that, Aksin Dabayeto, honestly. It is expected. You have a high profile couple. So Mizi has a huge following. But then Mohale has people's hearts, he has the sympathy of people. I think it was a small price to pay. So when I heard that Sumizi claims that Mohale wants half of everything that he owns, based on the very little understanding I have of, of customary marriage and just marriage law, if, if you are married by law, he's entitled to it anyways. So even if he didn't ask for it, I would have assumed he would, there would be something that would be worth fighting for. Karang ufuna half. Half. Imagine, you don't just walk into somebody else's life, do and expect to live with everything. 